How's it going? Uh, in this video, we're going to be talking about exponential functions. Uh, so exponential functions are just essentially functions that have a variable in the exponent. That's all that we are really looking for. Uh, a can be any real number. Uh, positive, negative, doesn't matter. Uh, B needs to be a positive number. Uh, that's what Apex says. Uh, but it cannot be 1, otherwise you're not really changing anything at all. Uh, so an exponential function, what it is, is something that... Uh, it has like a growth if it is like constantly doubling or tripling or whatever it's multiplying by a number greater than one as time goes along. So the easiest example uh, or a example uh, is like if we have a bunny population, right? A bunny population starts with two bunnies. Say those two bunnies have eight bunnies, right? So now we're up at eight bunnies. Those eight bunnies, if they each have eight bunnies, then we're at like 64 bunnies. So the population is just going to continue to grow super and super and super fast. So what this creates is something that we call an exponential function. So I'm continuously multiplying by that base, uh, which is what we call b. Uh, so in this case, our base would have been 8. I started with two bunnies. Each time they had babies, they made eight babies. And then I counted the number of times they had babies. This would be an exponential function where a is 2. So our starting value looks like it's 2. And then it's multiplying by h each time a generation moves forward. Uh, so that's essentially what an uh, exponential function is. It can be growth or it can be decay. Growth has a constant doubling of time. Decay has a constant halving of time. Uh, or it's thirding of time. Really, I don't know why they make you say doubling or halving. That doesn't make sense to me because it's really, it's, it's whatever. But it has to have the constant same, like doing this over time. Uh, so it's like constantly tripling or constantly halving or constantly one-fourthing or constantly something. Uh, it can't start to like change and fluctuate. Uh, then it no longer becomes an exponential function. Uh, but again, an exponential function, the biggest thing we need to have is that variable in the exponent. So that is a exponential function because we have a t in the exponent. It doesn't matter what the variable is, but as long as we have a variable in the exponent, it is considered an exponential function. All right, so let's see kind of how we assess exponential functions. You guys already have done some of this. Uh, you did this in algebra 1, really. Uh, so like, if we uh, determine the value of each function for the given x value, uh, so here I'm given f of 4. So f of 4, if I put it into my function, is 3 to the 4th. 3 to the 4th is 81, so that would be 81. Easy. Uh, same sort of deal. Uh, oh, I meant to say f of 3. I'm sorry. My bad. Uh, so f of 3 equals 1 half to the 3rd, which means 1 half times 1 half times 1 half which is the same thing as 1 to the 3rd divided by 2 to the 3rd, which is the same thing. 1 to the 3rd is 1, 2 to the 3rd is 8, so 1 over 8. Uh, 1 half times 3 to the x. We want to find f, sub, or f of 4. So f of 4 equals 1 half times 3 to the 4th. Well, that would be 1 half. We've already done 3 to the 4th. It's 81. So 1 half times 81, which would be 40.5. So 40.5. Yes, that would be my solution. All right. 4 to the x, 1 f of negative 3. So here, you guys got to remember your exponent rules. 4 to the negative third. What happens if I have a negative exponent is I can rewrite this on the other side of the fraction. So that would be like 4 to the negative third over 1. Uh, I can exchange what side the uh, part that's being raised to the exponent is on. Uh, so this becomes 1 over 4 to the positive third. So now this becomes 1 over 64. You'll see this if you type it in your calculator as well. Uh, you don't just have to believe me. Uh, it's true. I promise. So 4 to the negative third. That's a really small number. But I bet you a million bucks, if you had it, I wish you did, uh, and you bet me, shake hands on it, uh, would be the same number, so 1 over 64. So again, if you see a negative exponent, uh, like a to the negative b, that can be written as 1 over a to the positive b. Vice versa as well, if we had 1 over a to the negative b, would be the same thing as just a to the b, kind of over 1, but you don't really need that part. So just a to the b. All right, moving on. So here we have... Uh, f of t equals, I think that's 1 over 2 to the 4t. So still, f of 2, still just plug it in 2, so f of 2 
Again, it doesn't matter what the variable is. This case I'm plugging in instead of t. So 1 over 2 to the 4 times 2. Well, my exponent down here, uh, 4 times 2 is 8. So I have 2 times 1 over 2 to the 8th. 2 to the 8th, I think, is 256. Yeah. So I have 2 over 256, which is the same thing as 1 over 128. That would be what we're looking for. All right, next part we're going to talk about is uh, where you see exponential functions. A lot of times it sits with investing. You'll see this if you go to a, a bank and they tell you they compound interest. Uh, you'll see it if you're getting a loan on something. This is how they calculate stuff. Uh, they use one of these two formulas. Uh, this formula is when we are compounding uh, n times a year. Uh, so I have everything laid out. A represents the final amount. P represents principal, which is the initial amount. Uh, R is the interest rate. Make sure that you convert your rate. So if you have a 6% interest rate, remember that needs to be a real number, which is 0.06. Uh, N represents the number of yearly compounding. So if they tell you that they compound monthly, like they do in this example down here, all that means is N will be 12. There are 12 months in a year. Uh, so they compound that interest 12 times a year. Uh, if it were 6%, they would do that 0.06 divided by 12, and then they would actually see each month they'll put in how much ever you, you get from your earnings for that portion. Uh, T represents time in years. Make sure you know it's in years. Uh, so if they get you on like uh, six months or something like that, your T would be one half because six months is only half of a year. Uh, all right, the other thing. E is a super important number, just like pi in math. Uh, so this uh, it came about with a French mathematician, and it's used uh, a lot in natural numbers. Um, not actually natural, but it's like in nature is what I mean. Uh, this is an approximation for E, this 2.718. Apex will ask you about that as well. Uh, but it, it represents this formula, which Apex will also ask you about, which is why it's here. I don't usually show people this. Uh, but it represents 1 plus 1 over n to the nth power if n is very large. So if we do like, uh, see if our calculator will actually do it. Uh, 1 plus 1 divided by uh, 999999 raised to the 999999. All right, I have to use the same number for n. So it gets me to 2.718, right? And you actually have an E button as well on your calculator. Uh, the E button is right above our negative sign, right at the very bottom of the screen, right? Second E. So second E. So that gets us close, but we can tell it starts getting off about over here somewhere. Uh, so that, I mean, it'll be close enough, but it's just a number uh, that is very important. So just really the biggest thing you need to know is that E represents a number. It's not just a variable or something. Uh, this formula we will use when it says compounded continuously. That's what it's used for. Uh, we'll do examples of both of these as we go. All right, so we have how much uh, would $300 invested at 5% interest compounded monthly be worth after six years? So now it says compounded monthly, so that's the one with the N involved. Uh, my P is my original amount, my R is my interest rate, but I need to convert it to a decimal, and my time is six years. So I have A equals 300 times 1 plus R over N to the N times T power. So be very careful typing this in your calculator. Uh, so what I like to see is 300, and then I put parentheses, plus 0 0.05 divided by 12, and then raise that to the 12 times 6. Uh, you could also use Desmos if you wanted to, or a Google Calculator. I think they both will work just as well. Uh, so we should be getting 404.71, which dollars and cents. So that's why I did not do that 705, because there's not like half of a penny out there somewhere. Uh, there probably is. You're going to co cut one in half and be like, see, I did it. I, c I can make a half a penny. All right. How much? With $3,000 invested at 3.25 interest rate compounded annually. So if something is annual, uh, the annual dodgeball tournament or the annual uh, throw the ball in the air tournament, 
I don't know. Uh, if it's annually, it's only happening once a year, so n would be 1. But if it's telling you how often it's compounded, that's when we use the first, first formula. So there's my principal, there's my rate, there's my time. So I have a equals 3, 1, 2, 3,000, 1 plus r, 0, 3, 2, 5, divided by n to the n times t. So then be very careful typing that in your calculator. So I have yas 3,000 times 1 plus 0 0.0325 uh, divided by 1 won't do anything. Raised to the 1 times 4 is just 4. Oops, didn't mean to hit times 4, just 4, just 4. So 3409.43. 3409.43. Dollars and cents. Dollars and cents, y'all. Yo, man, with the money and the was it ball in the mesh? Uh, sorry, it happens. Uh, all right, uh, how much would five hundred dollars at four percent interest compounded continuously? So notice it says continuously. So that's when I'm going to use the PE to the RT. So this will be my formula, PE to the RT. Uh, it's going to have that E involved. Remember, E is approximately two point seven one eight two, I believe. Uh, so 500, my principal, there's my rate, 0.04, T is time, so A equals 500, E to the R, 0 0.04 times T. So here's how I entered that stuff. Alrighty, 500. So now they also have an E to the button. Uh, it doesn't matter which one you use. I like to use the E to the button. But uh, So if you hit second systems in blue, I need to hit second. And then it raises it to the power for me. So I'm going to do the, oh gosh, 0.04 times 7. Press enter, and it gives me my answer. Look at that, super fancy. So 661.56. 661.56. Dollar dollar bills, yo. All right, that was way off the screen. Yes. All right, use your calculator to evaluate e to the negative 2, round to two decimal places. So this is super easy. I only did this example to show you how easy it was. Take that light off. I can't see anything. Uh, so if I put in e to the negative 2, or really e to the whatever, it'll tell me what it is. Uh, two decimal places, so this is 0 0.14. 0 0.14. Hey, oh, that's my answer. All right, that's it for this video. Uh, here's a 0.14 monkey. Ha! Uh, let me know what I can do to help you guys out. Uh, bring on your questions. I'm always here for you, waiting to hear from you. All right, I'll talk to you all soon. Bye.